Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today is October 29th. Today is day 389. I do know what my name is. Um, despite how many days this horrific, horrific atrocities uh, have continued um, in Gaza, in Lebanon, uh, throughout the Middle East, uh, and also in Israel. Um, so an update um, from this 389th day, CIA Director Bill Burns floated um, a new proposal in terms of a possible ceasefire negotiation, 28 days um, for a ceasefire hostage swap proposal. Uh, this was during a meeting on Sunday with Israeli and Qatari envoys. Um, separately, yesterday, Netanyahu signaled that he was willing to accept the proposal that was um, suggested by Egypt. That was the two-day proposal uh, for a very small number of hostages to be released. Um, analysts say that any breakthroughs are unlikely until after the U.S. presidential election. Um, Israel's parliament, the Knesset, uh, approved uh, Monday, yesterday, two bills related to UNRWA, the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees. I talked about that a little bit yesterday. Um, the, so UNRWA has been banned from operating in Israel. This will go into effect in 90 days. There is no alternative body to distribute food and humanitarian assistance um, in Gaza or in East Jerusalem. Um, this will likely severely restrict the agency's ability to be able to operate, uh, particularly in Gaza and in the West Bank. UNRWA condemned the Knesset's uh, vote yesterday with the agency's commissioner general saying this was unprecedented, that this violates international law and Israel's obligation, that it amounts to collective punishment on Palestinians. The UN Secretary General uh, Guterres yesterday warned of devastating consequences because of this ban and said there's no alternative uh, to the agency. And a host of countries responded criticizing the decision to ban UNRWA. Canada, Australia, France, Germany, Japan, South Korea, and the UK expressed grave concern over the legislation. They said that Israel is not abiding by its international obligations. Ireland, Norway, Slovenia, and Spain condemned the move. Um, Axios reported today that the State Department and the U.S. spoke and their U.S. spokesperson said that the United States is deeply concerned about UNRWA's ban, that it will further exacerbate dire humanitarian um, circumstances. They've urged Israel to pause on the implementation of these bills. And I just want you to listen to the absurdity of the Biden administration and our current U.S. government. This is the same government that previously has cut UNRWA funding, that has not been supportive of UNRWA, you know, that we were arguing with on October you know, and November a year ago about the number of trucks that were being allowed in. And now, I mean, they're not wrong. I mean, now the things they're saying are the right things to say, but they're talking out of both sides of their mouths. Um, so the U.S., in my opinion, on this issue has just lost all credibility when it comes to this conflict. But State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller said, we've made it clear to the government of Israel that we're deeply concerned by this proposed legislation. UNRWA plays a critically important role in delivering humanitarian assistance to the civilians that need it in Gaza. There's nobody that can replace them right now in the middle of the crisis. We will consider next steps based on what happens in the days ahead. So that was from the State Department. At least 60 people were killed in an Israeli airstrike on a building where displaced Palestinians were sheltering in North Gaza earlier today. Only one medic remains in a North Gaza hospital following a weekend Israeli raid on that facility. That was reported urging international organizations to send medical staff to the enclave. The IDF has said that their forces killed dozens of Hamas militants in the Jabalia area in North Gaza and in central Gaza and uh, the Rafah area in the south of the Strip. It was reported today that 94 Palestinians were killed and dozens wounded in an Israeli airstrike on a residential building in the North Gazan town of Beit Lahia. That was according to medical sources. Marwan Alhams, an official in the health ministry, said 150 people or more were wounded, that at least 20 children were among the dead. Not only are more and more Palestinians in Gaza dying every day, now more than 43,000 people killed, but more and more Israelis continue to be killed as well. IDF soldiers, the IDF announced the names of one officer 
um, and three soldiers who were killed in a bomb explosion in North Gaza, uh, also in Jabalia today. In Israel, there were more than a thousand figures uh, from the literary industry, including noted authors, uh, Sally Rooney, um, Arantati Roy, and Rachel Kushner, who've all signed a pledge to boycott Israeli cultural institutions that are complicit or have remained silent observers of the overwhelming oppression of Palestinians. That's a direct quote. Israeli literary figures, these are Israeli citizens, um, well-known in Israeli society, they are denouncing, another quote, denouncing Israel's genocidal apartheid regime. Um, it's, it's important to note, Israel is becoming increasingly divided as a society. In the West Bank, two Palestinians were reported to have been wounded by gunfire, apparently from um, a settler while they were harvesting olives. This was near an outpost. Um, these are Palestinians in the West Bank, the occupied Palestinian territories. They were in the West Bank and they were wounded by gunfire from settlers in an area that they were, quote unquote, authorized to work in. Houthis targeted a ship that was traveling through uh, the Bab uh, El Mandeb Strait off of the Red Sea. They failed to damage it, but the British military's UK Maritime Trade Operations Center reported. The South African legal team yesterday delivered its main legal case accusing Israel of genocide against Palestinians in the International Court of Justice. That was a follow-up on the accusations that had been brought forward uh, months and months and months ago. Um, Hezbollah today named Naim, Naim Qasim, its longtime deputy leader, as its new secretary general. This is replacing Hassan Nasrallah, who was killed in airstrikes last month. The decision came after Nasrallah's heir apparent, the executive council chief Hashem uh, Safadin, was also killed in an Israeli airstrike in Beirut in early October. Um, there, I'm sorry to go back and forth, I, I put this note in the wrong place, but this is also related to uh, the Hezbollah escalations between Israel and Hezbollah. There was a 22-year-old resident of um, northern Israel uh, who was killed, uh, Mohammed Yasser Naim, who was killed in a Hezbollah a rocket strike that hit north Israel. Um, so he was a resident of a northern Israeli city. Hezbollah had fired at least 50 rockets towards north Israel today. Netanyahu is set to discuss the possibility of negotiations for a ceasefire with Hezbollah in Lebanon later on today. I'm sure those discussions have happened. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Israel, um, their Saturday attack on Iran that happened over the weekend, quote, should be the end of the direct exchange of fire between countries. That's what U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Linda Thomas-Greenfield told the U.N. Security Council yesterday, warning Iran that if they launched any new attacks, there would be severe consequences. And finally, the U.S. is running low on some types of air defense missiles amid a wide Amid the widening crisis in the Middle East, the Pentagon is continuing to raise questions about the readiness of the United States to keep up with demands. There are some questions by analysts if we are putting the U.S. security at risk by our outsourcing um, and arming of so many foreign countries in the midst of their wars, um, namely Israel and Ukraine. So that is the update for the day. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. May God go before us in our attempts towards peace. Uh, don't give up hope. Continue in your efforts. May God go before us. Amen.